Well, it doesn't take a Broadway musical to know that the wind comes sweeping down the Oklahoma Plains. Our state's two largest utility providers are closing in on generating 10% of our electricity using wind power. And Oklahoma has the potential to do a lot more, which is the theme of a conference scheduled for later this month. But before we tell you about that, our Russ Jewell has some background. It's well known that we like growing things in Oklahoma. Everything from bright green canola to sugary canes of sweet sorghum can be seen rising from our state soil. And among these are what may very well be the tallest crop in the state, wind turbines. This is huge for Oklahoma. Oklahoma's first wind farm was built near Woodward in 2003. Since then, our state has become home to over 470 turbines spread across nine different farms, energizing not only the state's power grid, but the economy as well. By 2030, we expect that we're going to be the second largest producer of, of electricity for the nation. Oklahoma Secretary of Commerce Natalie Shirley says the impact the state's wind industry could have both here at home and throughout the nation is monumental. What commerce is looking at is, is preparing the state for, for many activities, for manufacturing, for repair and maintenance, um, for research and development, for education, the whole aspect of wind that will give us a, a, um, uh, a large presence in this industry. And many across the state have already begun to reap the benefits of Oklahoma's growing wind industry. Leslie Crawl is a farmer just outside of Weatherford and says he reaps many benefits from the two turbines recently installed on his property. We have an annual lease payment that they rent uh, and they pay us a, a, a fee every year for, for the rights to have the wind towers on our farms. It really hasn't changed our farming any at all because the blades are so high up. Uh, this farm here that we're currently on, we, we either run cattle or, or make hay out of it. And it hadn't affected us one bit at all. And though they may have little impact on Crawl's farming, he still can't be helped but to be awestruck by these towering structures. I've never been on top of one, and I don't know as I, I would even do it if I had the opportunity, but I know there's a lot of people that uh, work uh, every day climbing up and down these towers. You can have some kind of idea how many turbines we're going to have in the United States. And many of those people can be found right here in Oklahoma. Greg Adams is an instructor for the Wind Technician Training Program at High Plains Technology Center in Woodward, where he's busy bringing up a new generation of workers to support the wind revolution. If the industry progresses like it's anywhere near forecasted, we need trained personnel to operate these wind farms, climb the towers, check the oil, check the computers, make sure everything's operating right. These are very, very expensive machines. Maintenance is a very, very important aspect of it. And Adams says the demand for workers will only go up as Oklahoma's wind capacity increases. Our need for personnel is going to be direct, directly proportional to the, to the amount of wind turbines that we actually have built. And if past growth is any indication, success will no doubt be blowing down Oklahoma's plains. Within 10 years, it'll mean 18 thousand jobs. In five years, it's going to be 7,000 jobs. This could mean $500 million worth of, of taxes to the state alone and about $2.5 billion in, in, in total economic impact for the state. So it really is quite large. Showing that the gusty winds of Oklahoma may just be the sound of money.